Welcome to Convo Lounge Expression Exposure Experience. All right, welcome to yet another episode of the Convo Lounge podcast where we are continuing to have different uh, conversations around the unemployment a problem in our economy, trying to find a ways in which we can provide solutions to the unemployment problem in Botswana, be it by bringing in the different talents that are working to provide solutions uh, to this unemployment problem, or we're just having a conversation with experts in industry to have conversations about some of the insights into their industry what the current trends are, what their experiences have been in the industry so that in case you are watching at home, you might pick a thing or two. Maybe it could influence you to have an academic research into that area or even shape your career as a graduate on this different spaces. And today we are going to be talking about everything a digital marketing industry. We have an expert here who has been engaged in this industry for well over 10 years now. And uh, we're just going to get more uh, from him about his experiences and the latest trends that he is seeing in terms of the digital marketing uh, space. Welcome to the conversation, uh, Mr. Mugende. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you very much for having <laughs> right. me. Um, yeah. Maybe just let's start off uh, here just to get you to introduce yourself to, right. to, to the viewers at home uh, because I'm very much interested in how you're going to introduce yourself. I think I'm going to pick my next question from that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, my name is Mudir Mugende. Um, I'm a dad. Um, I'm a husband. Um, those are the most important things. Yeah. Um, I'm a media entrepreneur. Um, and a general enthusiast of of building stuff um, and trying new things. So basically, that's who I am. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, you being a, a media entrepreneur. Um, break it down for us. Uh, what do you mean by that? So um, I run a, a, a cool, should I say, enterprise with some amazing young people called Launch Comps. We prefer to go by the name Launch. But uh, as per registering a company, we needed a surname. So we're launch comms um, officially, but we are launch, um, as, as you would see. So we are a digital marketing and public relations firm um, based in Khaboroni. Um, we work with some really amazing clients across F F uh, FMCG, um, insurance, uh, banking, telco, and some of your favorite brands have entrusted us with providing services from them uh, within the disciplines of digital marketing and within the disciplines of public relations. Yeah. And, and for you to mention um, digital marketing and public relations, it takes me back to uh, a project that I did, I think it's 2018. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time when I approached someone thinking that they are the communicate or marketing um, officer for that a certain brand, right? Mm -hmm. Only for her to tell me that she's in public relations and took me to the marketing department. And yeah. when I got to the marketing offices, along the way, as we were building on that brand, uh, on the campaign, I was introduced to an advertising agency. And then it got a bit um, dizzy for me uh, when I got to read your bio from our producer that you started off, at one point you were a public relations officer mm -hmm. and you've moved to be a digital to a marketer and I was wondering where is the difference in that um, if you could explain maybe break it down to us what is marketing what is advertising what is public relations so you could you could call them technically all brand disciplines yeah. however there are quite distinct differences uh, within those disciplines right um, to your point the first person you encountered was a um, public relations person right um, that, that concern in day-to-day -day activity is managing the public perception and messaging around the brand and its people. Remember, a brand doesn't exist in, in isolation, right? And then when you get to the marketing people, that job is the brand itself. It's components, what goes into um, the brand. Um, it's colors. We, you've heard of something maybe called the corporate identity. They're the custodians of the corporate identity. Um, and they jealously guard it, by the way. Hey, don't, yeah. don't mess with the <laughs> marketer and the CI. Uh, my team has seen many a times, right? And then uh, lastly, there's advertising. 
um, advertising is really or mostly uh, made up of go to market, right? How do you take your product to market? Um, what is in the messaging um, in the audience you are targeting? What do you want them to know and what do you want them to buy, right? That's largely where advertising um, um, plays, right? And then lastly, obviously, I just use the word buy. That's when then now um, the, the brand discipline hands over to the sales guys now. That's where our job is done now when we've communicated the value proposition to the client and show them how the product fits within their lives, right? And then now that's when it's ideos to sales. I'm saying this because marketing is not sales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that we have to constantly teach and remind. Marketing is not sales. Uh, marketing is a great function and enabler of actual sales. Yeah. yeah. And then how do you then get to find a career in such a, a space? Uh, do you, at the beginning of it, just have a straight um, a forward um, entry into whether you go to marketing, whether you go to PR, whether you go to advertising? You know, because it's a creative discipline also, um, with a lot of science behind it, but it's a creative discipline at the end of the day. It means that a lot of people have found themselves in our space having never gone to school for it, right? Yeah. Um, I'll give you an example of myself, right? Um, first uh, summer job or end of school job was in as an intern at uh, which was the largest magazine in Botswana in the in the two thousands. Um, I was an intern. I was a runner, basically. Yeah. Um, and then I went to college and studied political science. I really love political science, but half of the political science discipline is public public engagement, what the public thinks, public opinion, uh, politics itself, right? So it lended itself very well to media. So I went back to media and I worked for, um, at the time, the loudest and largest radio station um, in Botswana, it's the youth radio station. Did my time there, did very well. Um, I was I was then headhunted by a, a, a public relations firm who wanted me to come and help them um, with some very key skills, right? Remember in, in media, I would have learned how to write, how to put together public messaging, um, how to engage with authority and communicate what they want to communicate for public consumption. So that was a that's a key skill media taught me that I could lend to public relations. However, then they're still very different themselves, right? Yeah. So as time developed, um, because this PR agency was actually part of a larger group that had a marketing agency, it means I'm working a lot closer with the marketing guys. I'm seeing the discipline. And around 2016, social media starts becoming a thing. We start delving into that at us service, social media grows into digital marketing. I then um, decided to self-fund to go and study um, for, for digital marketing. Uh, started with started straight from the bottom, even yeah. though I had a, a BA with a certificate, went on to do um, a diploma. Um, now we're exploring a master's around digitization. So you see that the journey, I mean, it's 12 years since I've been in this space, but the journey was, there's a lot of um, interconnectedness, yeah. but also a lot of evolution at the same time. So, so in me sharing that, I'm just saying that you can find your way into it. You don't have to have started yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah. And talking about evolution, uh, we we're, the point at where we are at right now, you find that um, digital uh, marketing or technology is taking over the world. There's a lot of advancements in technologies and uh, Right now, you find there are different artificial intelligence tools. You have your chat GPT, you have Jasper for um, copywriters and ad creative and all of these many uh, artificial intelligence um, tools that are there uh, for the marketing industry. And the question that then comes is, are people's jobs um, at risk? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting one. But look, um, just like you highlighted, marketing, uh, digital marketing was born of marketing, right? Mm -hmm. um, what does that even mean? It just, it, it's just that human evolution is a perpetual thing. And if first and foremost you understand that, you should be okay. Because um, marketing initially used to mean billboards, radio, print, 
um, flyers, activations, right? But now, um, in digital marketing, we're talking content, social, um, we're talking um, Google ads and all those other elements, programmatic advertising, search engine optimization, email marketing, all those other components. What you realize then is that at the end of the day, when you truly take a closer look, um, those things are not so different from the traditional. Um, in the sense that they all are trying to achieve the same objective. Just that now add the word digital, it means you're adding metrics. You can measure. You're adding targeting, personalization, um, audience, audience segmentation, all those other elements that the traditional marketing um, did not have, right? And it's just the story of the typewriter, which now... You can even argue that it started with the typewriter. Now we have the phone. Yeah. Right? Not even the laptop. We have the phone because we are able to do almost the same thing that the typewriter used to achieve. So, chat GPT, um, any advanced... Um, any advanced technological evolution that is coming in. It's an evolution of what we're doing. It's complementary to human's growth, uh, humanity's growth, and we have adopted it. Um, I personally can't even claim it. My team, because they're sub-30, yeah. uh, they write emails with ChatGPT. Yeah. So it took me a bit of reading three, four emails to say, wait a minute, guys, why do your emails sound like this? Uh, yeah. That's when they told me, you know, we're using this. And it's making us more productive because my team is not spending countless hours trying to write emails, um, things that need quick responses. They just uh, plug in that bot and we're trying to develop our own event and within the marketing space, right? And then just lastly, we also think that because humanity will always be, as much as we evolve well, we're also quite indecisive. No matter what technology you bring, um, there will always be a, sp a space for people to become experts and provide it as a service. Yeah. So if you're in a space, if you're, 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 you're a copywriter right now, you need to be learning the copywriting um, 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 AIs, right? Because it's all part of the evolution. So to it's a long-winded answer to your question. But I don't think we personally, as individuals, need to worry. Because at the end of the day, if we continuously learn and get smarter and better, we'll continuously be able to dictate the evolution of the technology also yeah. and participate and offer it as a service and employment, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Then what would you say then to um, students who are currently in varsity right now or uh, just like yourself, uh, somebody who is actually trying to teach themselves into the space um, in terms of utilizing uh, such tools? Um, I would say read yeah. what is going on. One thing I love about ChatGPT, right? Because nothing has come in the technology space in such a long time. You know, we've been really caught up in developing new social media apps yeah. really for the last 10, 20 years as, as, a, as humanity, right? So ChatGPT has brought in a whole new conversation that, you know, we've been missing in this space, right? Now, it means that if you're a student, no matter what it is that you're doing, and one thing I also about GPT is seemingly touching every element of life. Yeah. You can design your a room, so um, interior design. Um, you can, you know, land, plan a landscaping. You can plan copy. You can do a content strategy through that, right? So it means that there's something for everybody yeah. in it, right? You can be a farmer, and study what you can do with AI for the betterment of what you're doing. Yeah. But the only way you're going to do that if you stay abreast and informed about all these constant developments, and it doesn't matter what you're studying, you literally can become the agronomist or the forestry experts with um, AI information. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's just go for a quick uh, break. And then when we come back, uh, we're going to continue this conversation. I'm very much interested now to learning uh, more about, you know, the opportunities that are within the uh, digital economy and in you recruiting your uh 
team uh, what are those competencies uh, that you would look forward uh, to so that they could help you you know amplify what your brands uh, the brands that you are working with are trying to achieve let's go for a quick break when we come back we're going to continue this is convo a lounge do remember that uh, you could uh, follow us on a different social media platforms as convo lounge africa Convo Lounge. Expression, exposure, experience. Welcome back to the Cover Lounge podcast. We're still having a conversation here with Mudiri Muganda, one of our uh, digital marketing minds in the country, just to uh, take a leave from his book of knowledge on the industry and how it's evolving and uh, where we are going to get it with the industry. And w- maybe you could pick a, a thing or two uh, from it. And just before we went to the break, I had um, asked him if there are jobs as um, digital uh, marketing agencies are not on the line and you know just to try to understand what the technology coming in the different ai platforms that are there are they not going to kick them out of a job and maybe let's continue the conversation from them uh mudiri to see uh how then would you suggest that you know people would make sure that um they don't find themselves um out of a job or even you know with the development of the curriculum at higher education institutions that you know they could align more to where the industry is headed okay mm-hmm. so like i was highlighting um the essence of it is what is taking place is an evolution of technology that obviously is bringing efficiency to what we do right it's not it's not being created in a vacuum yeah well it's stuff that's being created to help us live better as people so um obviously there will always be a risk in 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 all evolutions i gave an example of traditional marketing to digital marketing it means that somebody used to be called an above the line marketer yeah a uh, above the line marketer would know dimensions of a billboard like the back of their hand and all that um the smart people what they're doing is they're now learning um oh okay i was dealing with billboards now i want to deal with programmatic advertising right so by learning it means that we are getting more skills um that are of higher value into the modern world right and complementing the technological evolution um it's not easy but it's something that we need to have as a mindset now you brought up the curriculum the truth of the matter is no matter what happens is education will always lag behind technology that's just the nature of the world yeah right so it then um calls for self efficacy where you are self learning you are self curious and you then will grow out of that so we then need to really shift our mindsets as people to preserve ourselves uh, in the workplace and remain relevant but we need to then by but we do that by garnering the new modern skills you learn how chat gpt works yeah. and you become a chat gpt consultant i've never met somebody called that but yeah. surely if <laughs> if if um like i say i'm not very competent in the ai space yeah. but i've got a team of people who they live and eat it yeah. right so i need that team right yeah. for my business to succeed so that's that's where where we make sure that we make the adjustments and there will be job losses because efficiency tends to come with that yeah but there will be also new industry and new um economies and new opportunities and new jobs created yeah. from the evolution let's look at your company launch all yes. right um with the opportunities that you would have for working with different brands and different clients uh what are sort of the competencies that you would expect for somebody would you would recruit into your team looking at you know the services that you provide as a company into mm-hmm. this digital uh, marketing space so because we are a new age business right um a lot of people who have worked with us current and past we've taught we've taught a lot of stuff yeah. right uh because we're also a curious business and they've taught us a lot of stuff so usually um media graduate marketing graduate is enough for you to enter yeah now 
what is important is curiosity um i'm a very curious person i consume everything i read um i still read newspapers by the way yeah i know uh people of today uh, yeah i read newspapers i read twitter news um i've got news apps and all that i'm forever curious in terms of what's taking place right so i hire for curiosity all my team members are very curious individuals they figure a lot of stuff out they learn something new every day why is that important because we're in a curious stage of of the world yeah. right the most unique skills are usually for those people who are trying to do something different yeah so that's that's the um, the bare minimum is obviously um, a, a basic understanding of how marketing works how media works um but i don't see how we cannot um take a diamond in the rough and polish it for it to sparkle yeah yeah and then talking about that um how do we then get um the industry to 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 move forward you know getting um the many graduates that are there to actually uh be different from the others so that they could you know tap into having a, a role to play in the digital uh, space Look, I I some some people say I'm too much of an optimist, yeah. but I'm um, I I genuinely believe there's no better time um in the history of the time I've been working in terms of opportunities to do something um learn something that pays you. Yeah. Right? It may not be a traditional 9 to 5. It may not be a traditional 22 days a month. and a paycheck and a pay slip and a pension yeah but for the first time since i've worked um i know of corporates that even engage people on freelance basis so if you have a competency that lacks in a corporate large scale business yeah you can have a conversation and approach and get that right i know of people who because uh, I I believe we are in the digital economy despite what people say to what level yeah. but we are in the digital economy because um this is going to be broadcasted digitally right I spend some time away from my office uh, literally um if uh, my physical presence wasn't there but I knew everything that was taking place we were delivering the same as as I was away for a week right so we are in a digital economy so I know people who yeah. who do remote jobs um global remote jobs i know one person who works at night only you try and meet with them during the day that are unavailable because they're sleeping because they're servicing companies in the us i know somebody who i think i read it on linkedin they are a virtual assistant also based in botswana gaboroni and they're a virtual assistant for a company in the us so so what i'm trying to highlight is that um as much as unemployment is a huge challenge um at the present moment technology is making things better and if you find your feet in there find an expertise that you can sell you you are better off right yeah um and the days like i highlighted of the traditional 9 to 5 22 day job they are seemingly fading away because technology is just changing the way we do things yeah. right so first and foremost if you shift your mindset around that you start exploring opportunities online um i've heard of the crypto boys i've heard of the forex boys all these guys are trading stuff online i know nothing about that stuff yeah. but what they're doing is they're generating um a source of living and they're feeding their families yeah is that not what employment is supposed to achieve yeah. i believe that's that so i know sometimes young people will find these opportunities and then when the 9 to 5 appointment letter comes they dump that and go into the 9 to 5 yeah. but you can literally if you grow it and you invest in it you grow to become um, a significant person in this space is it not maybe because botswana um, i don't know how's the reception of our economy in terms of, uh, most particularly even the public um, service in actually getting to adopt these different different technological advancements um in how things are, are being done in the country i'll tell you covid happened yeah <laughs> and covid um made a lot of people uncomfortable 
um it and i i believe even stuff like chat gpt and a lot of our technological advancements right now were accelerated by COVID, right and because of that it meant that even civil service gets to experience connectivity and technology in ways that it didn't use it before so it opened up um it opened up the space a little bit at the end of the day we are um, a small corner in the world yeah we don't move necessarily at the pace of the tigers of the world however like i highlighted now the world is globally connected the center of Khabarun has 5G connectivity. There's nothing stopping you from servicing companies in India, in Dubai, in the UK, in the US. Yeah. So if your pace is at that level, um, there's, there's, there's an opportunity. Yeah. If your pace is Africa, Sub-Sahara, there's opportunity. So I think for us is we need to increase our optimism. Yeah. We need to increase increase our expertise yeah. and it will come yeah how do you spot then those um, opportunities and maybe how do we get um, the young people that are unemployed uh, multi-talented um, to look for these opportunities and seize these opportunities and play in that um, area so the internet yeah um, Botswana has a very interesting dynamic um, I think there were 2.3 million four people in the country, right? Yeah. Of those, about 1.3 um, are online. But um, we, I mean, this is that we share with clients all the time because we work in that space. But I always say to clients, uh, there's nuance to the numbers. 1.3 million people online. What? What? The question we should always ask, what are they doing online? But where are they online? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> right? So you find that a lot of people are on uh, Meta's Facebook. Um, okay, check. What are they doing on Facebook, right? So a lot of people are online and not necessarily productively online. Mm -hmm. But all the resources and all the information I'm talking about is online. So the part, there's a two-part um, thing we can do here. As individuals, we can use the opportunity to be online, um, to learn and look for, hunt for those opportunities but also uh it doesn't absolve um government and corporates and large institutions from availing the information online right mm -hmm. you should be able to tap into a website and find out about um remote works and remote jobs and and all that and opportunities to study and 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 then also one of the things that also is quite prevalent in Botswana is that um, a lot of our networks only provide like social media packages for online and all that. We 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 need to encourage and work with them for them to expand to providing the whole web because of that 1.3 million people, there's a demographic dividend there. It's young people below the age of 25. So we need to to, to have um, the authorities that be and corporates and all that really advocate for access to the internet because that's the only way people are going to know what's going on across the world, find out those opportunities, be on LinkedIn. I'm a big fan of LinkedIn. I think you would have known yeah. it by now. Uh, be on LinkedIn and read of fellow people doing that stuff and ask them, hey, how do you become a, a virtual assistant? And you usually find that there's just a link. You register, you upload your CV, and then you, you, you can participate. Yeah. And then learning um, how to code. Learning how to code, you don't need to go to some school and spend five years. People learn how to code in their bedrooms. Yeah. So, but the only way we're able to enable that is access to the internet yeah. and the full internet, yeah. not necessarily Twitter, Facebook only. Yeah. yeah. Let's get to issues of you know research and innovation in this digital uh, marketing space. Um, the information um, around what really is happening and the adaptation of it in our economy is it information that is um, readily available. Uh, do you have a go-to spot where you could say, um, this is where I can get insights of what is happening or what's the case like? <laughs> it's a big challenge in our country. It's a big challenge in our country in the sense that, um, I don't know, I think information governance is a big, big problem. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't even have enough experts and understanding in the space. Really, when you look at it, you look at, we have one of the 
best universities in Africa. Size, resources, academics. People at uh, our universities have gone to the best schools in the world, right? And those people are research experts. Where's that research, right? It's sitting in certain libraries and journals and all that. And if you want to access it, half of the time, I was when I was doing my postgraduate diploma um, in digital marketing, so I was trying to find digital information about Botswana. A lot of it is behind a paywall uh, online, right? So imagine if I didn't have resources, I wouldn't be able to access it, right? That journal and all that. So really for us in the digital space, our job really is to educate um, large-scale organizations also and say, look, this information needs to be online, yeah. right? It's not enough to just have a Facebook page and think you are online as an organization. No, 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 no. If you are saying you have research or insights or whatever communicate you want the public to consume, it needs to be well packaged online so that people don't need to walk through your door and and ask for that information yeah. readily available. Yeah. So I think we have a deficiency there as a country that's just the honest truth but um because more people are getting into the digital space because more people are learning and organizations also are putting pressure on employees to upskill right so my belief that is uh, as time goes by we will have a perfect environment i mean as saw government some of the services are coming online which is great you know you can book your license from home and then just go in and and, and do the physical card so that's very much in the right direction yeah. yeah and i think this is it really presents an opportunity for uh many uh, who'd want to play in the space to see how they can take this information that is um, stacked in um, room somewhere uh, <laughs> to a digital space where it could be easily um, adapted. Um, maybe in closing, um, yeah. just your, your your last words to 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 our viewers at home um, in terms of you know how we could leverage on the different opportunities uh, that we see upcoming or emerging in our economy. Um, I particularly want to speak to young people, especially people below the ages of 27, 26, um, not to exclude the older <laughs> ones, but because I think at that age, um, you have three things that a lot of people older than you don't have. Yeah. You have a lot of energy. Um, you usually, usually, let's use the word usually, have less responsibilities. Yeah. So what you need to really fill up your mind and time and energy with is learning yeah. learn as much as you can i know we don't have a, a culture of doing three four jobs yeah um if you have an opportunity do that because that's where you're going to grasp where things are headed you're not going to be locked in into things if you have a nine to five in that age at that age you should be doing something on a saturday even on a sunday you know um you you are young hard work won't break you yeah and uh, when you're old, that might. You know what I mean? Um, so that's what I would say. Yeah. And I think um, the digital space is providing um, a lot. In the evenings, people can be learning online. There's free courses that I'm discovering every day. Yeah. I don't have the opportunity to take them up because I get home, I have children running around. But um, when you are at that age, really, you need to really try and, you know, if you are in marketing, for instance, let me talk also to the marketers, learn SEO, become mm. an expert at it. Um, learn how AI is impacting marketing and what is it that you can do and to benefit to become that expert, right? Yeah. Uh, learn content development because uh, today marketing is all about authentic connections, right? Yeah. The days of the big brand in your face are gone. Yeah. Um, so those are very practical skills, stuff that you can Google right now and you find a little cost there. It may be free. It may be paid. And a lot of times these things are paid at $10, yeah. $20. But what is twenty dollars? Three hundred pool. Yeah. What do you do with three hundred bucks? Right. So sometimes we really need to evolve as an economy and as people to adjust to what the world is doing, and not just um, try and wait it out and hope things get better. Yeah. Yeah. But what about the transfer of skills of experts like yourself uh, to the twenty-three-year-olds, uh, twenty-five-year-olds? Um, let's talk about you know the role that. Um, senior or experts in the area could actually play in actually um, helping these young ones come up? 
Um, it's very important. Yeah. I think if you have 10 years of experience and you're not teaching anybody, in honesty, I think you're a selfish human being. Yes. Um, Hopefully one of you are not. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, no, I've got a few people who work for me yeah. um, that are in that age bracket. Okay. I, I hope and trust that I'm pouring into them. Yeah. Because like I say, um, at the end of the day, there's stuff I know. Yeah. But the stuff I know might not necessarily be what they need to learn, might be what they need to unlearn. Right. So I'm really pouring into my team. Um, I think they're superstars. I think they're hardworking and they're committed. So I think they're going to do well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if you, as as somebody who has worked, like I said, a few 10 years in, in industry and there's no way you are imparting skills, I think you're not doing a uh, 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 you're doing injustice to this country. You need to share, you need to teach, um, you need to collaborate with these young people. Because, uh, look, all of us, we were given a leg up by somebody, you know. Um, and, and Botswana is not a rich country. So majority of us don't even come from a network to a rich family. So somebody has to decide to say, hey, Mudir, let's go. So we need to do the same, right? It can be through employment like I'm doing or through just mentorship or through just when young people reach out to you, you share what you can. I know we're busy. Uh, you can't take that away. But sharing for 30 minutes to an hour would not hurt. It motivates those young people and they see that it's possible because it's so hard when you're sitting unemployed at home with a degree to see it and say, can it get better? It's yeah. hard. But now when somebody tells you if I share my story, I can show you that, no, it's very possible. Um, and you can do this, um, that which I didn't do. Yeah. So I think um, anybody, who, I, I'll repeat this, 10 years worth of work experience, you need to be teaching somebody something. All right, cool stuff. <laughs> or just go on LinkedIn and just tell us a story how you started exactly. a poetry from a feather. That's, that's <laughs> the same. I started with a grain of of, of rice and <laughs> now I have a rice fix yeah. type of thing. You know I mean? <laughs> Thank you very much for the conversation, uh, Mudiri, and uh, all the best of your luck with your company um, launch. We're just waiting to see what uh, great work it is going to be and to continue impacting uh, information and knowledge to the upcoming generation and let's solve the unemployment problem in our economy. Thank you very much for joining us. Remember that uh, you could give us feedback on today's episode by ex sending us a WhatsApp at plus two six seven seven six five one triple nine two, or just go onto our social media platforms at Convo Lounge Africa. Bye. Convo Lounge. Expression, exposure, experience.